The larvae can eat and decompose any sort of organic waste and recycle it and convert it into essential nutrients that can be used by other plants, animals, and organisms. If you were to walk in your local park in a world without flies, you'd be tripping over roadkill, rotting logs, and stepping in any nasty surprise left by your neighbor's dog. Flies are extremely important to us. But how do we tell which species are what? Well, entomologists use a process known as taxonomy. Taxonomy is the naming and classification of different species. Without this, we would assume there's only one species of fly in the world, that tiny little black bush fly that tries to land on a sausage sandwich before you can say goodbye. The entomologists have actually described 159,000 species of flies in the world. Flies actually represent 10 to 15 percent of all living life, just flies. Entomologists name these species by first going out into nature and collecting specimens. We then bring them back to the museum where we can pop them under the microscope, identify them, describe them, we even pin them and label them and store them. This is known as curation. You can think of a museum as a fantastic library of the world's knowledge of biodiversity. Imagine if I told you to go to your local library and reorganize all the books, but I was a bit cheeky and took all the label information and dust jackets off them. This may seem like an impossible task, but it's essentially the daily job of an entomologist. We put labels or names on each species and then categorize them. Instead of non-fiction or fiction, butterflies, wasps, and even flies. It's an exciting time to be a taxonomist because every day we're discovering new species. We've estimated that we've only described about a quarter of life on Earth at the moment, with many more to discover. It's also a challenging time too because the number of taxonomists are declining and interest in the science is fading. What makes matters even more difficult is that we're losing species at a rapid rate due to harmful human activities like climate change, deforestation, and introduction of invasive species. So we really need the help from the younger generation to pick up a net and fight the fight with us to describe every single species in this world before it's too late. So to generate a bit of buzz about taxonomy, I've described a new species of horsefly after a particular performer. These specimens were originally discovered over 30 years ago when they were collected. However, no one at the time knew how to identify them because they didn't have the knowledge of that particular group. So they sat in the Australian National Insect Collection in Canberra with the other 12 million insect specimens that were curated there waiting for someone with the knowledge of that group to come along and identify it. And that was me a few years ago as part of my PhD. I was going through these unidentified specimens and this bright golden abdomen caught my eye. And because I happened to work on that group, I knew it was a new species straight away. Pretty amazing discovery, I thought. So I pulled this specimen out and put a name on it. I named it Plinthina Beyonce, after the new delicious Beyonce. Much to my surprise, this went viral and was embraced on social media and even made international news. I was absolutely flabbergasted when this landed on the pages of the New York Times and was even part of one of the monolo monologues and was even part of one of the monologues on the Ellen DeGeneres show. <laughs> what made me even more excited is that it started a global conversation on why flies are important. It could demonstrate the fun side of taxonomy, the naming of species. As you can see, not all entomologists have crazy white hair and wear lab coats all day. So this was the Beyonce fly. But what if I told you there was one species getting even more attention lately? Some have even said it could become the next superfood of the 21st century. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the black soldier fly, Hemitia elusens.
What makes this species really cool is that adults look like wasps, but they have no stingers and they're completely harmless. The adults don't even eat, so there's no worry about them transferring disease. Now, you may have recognised these larvae in your backyard powering your compost bin, and this is because they're eating machines or super hipsters <laughs> because they can quickly consume any sort of organic waste, whether it's rotting vegetables, fruit, meat scraps, or even if they're desperate enough, manure, and turn it into a rich source of fats, oils, protein, and calcium. The larvae are actually 45% protein, so you can think of them as little wriggling protein bars. <laughs> Although we first described the species back in 1758, we're only truly discovering its potential now. Let me take you to the future. The year is 2050, and we're expected to feed 9.6 billion people on the same limited resources we have today. With the rise of the middle class, we're also going to be eating 70% more animal products, and the cost of feeding these animals is going to escalate. So here's some food for thought. Could we harness the power of flies to feed this growing population? Now, I'm not talking about going to your grocery store and buying a couple of handfuls of larvae and putting a stir fry for dinner. But could we feed them to our pets or farm animals? Well, guess what? We're doing this right now. Scientists in America, in the United States, Canada, India, South Africa, and even right here in Australia, are transforming black soldier fly larvae into a rich and sustainable nutritious meal for livestock. Black soldier fly feed has been found suitable for a diet of chickens, prawns, fish, pigs, and even alligators. Research has shown that there's been no negative impacts on the animals eating this meal, and that some chickens have actually preferred the taste and have eaten a lot more. They've actually grown larger on black soldier fly feed. Trials have shown that customers couldn't even detect a difference in the taste or aroma of products grown on black soldier flies. So we could either partially or completely replace conventional feed with black soldier flies. There are so many benefits of using this eco-friendly fly. For starters, we could divert thousands of tons of organic waste from entering landfill and turn it into something useful. One female fly can lay up to 600 larvae, and each of these larvae can eat half a gram of organic waste per day. So this one family of flies could eat an entire greenhouse waste in each year. Imagine what farms of like soldier flies could do. Researchers in Costa Rica have found that they could significantly reduce their household waste by up to 75% simply by feeding it to black soldier flies. How cool would it be if we could do this in Australia? But wait, it gets better. We currently use half the world's usable lands to grow crops like soy and corn to feed our agricultural animals. But black soldier flies require a much smaller footprint. They can be used, they can be grown in warehouses or smaller farms. How amazing would it be if we could return this land to nature and rehabilitate it, or use it to grow crops for humans, while still providing a nutritious meal to farm animals? The cherry on top is that researchers have actually been able to extract oil from these larvae and turn it into biodiesel. This could significantly reduce the pressure placed on fossil fuels. Imagine going to your petrol station and filling your car up with fly biodiesel, or as I like to call it, flyer diesel. <laughs> this little fly could become the world's superhero if we let it. By sharing with you the beauty of the fly, I hope to have changed your mind and that you might, you might now see them as useful and part of the world's delicious biodiversity. <laughs> there are so many new and exciting species waiting to be discovered. So if you're interested in science or entomology, visit your local museum, start a citizen science program, 
or even start a digital insect collection by going outdoors, photographing specimens, and then go online and try and identify them. Most importantly, keep your passion alive, because you never know when you might journey down your own research rabbit hole. And remember, the next time you enjoy a piece of chocolate, may you be thankful and appreciate the hard work of the humble fly. <laughs>